Honestly, I don't know why I wore this jacket because it's way too small. Like, I really like it and all, but another thing in a consignment, I guess. Hi, gang. So, you know, I never do videos like this, but I feel like it was kind of mandatory for a couple of reasons. Number one, I wanted to show off this lovely new um, chair I got from a place called Junk Jubilee. Well, it's not really a place, it's more like a convention type thing that's held in Des Moines, Iowa every single year. So I went there, got this old puppy, and I probably shouldn't be sitting on it because it's literally from the 1800s. <laughs> you know what? I think it's okay. I already had somebody sit in it for a fashion film and they didn't break it, so I feel like it's all right. Number two, my family just had its Thanksmas, which is Thanksgiving and Christmas, because we only see one side of the family for Thanksgiving and then the other side for Christmas, and we have to get the Christmas stuff out of the way during Thanksgiving. Why the quality of this video looks much better than usual, I got a ring light. <laughs> I'm using the warm setting right now. There's two different settings. It's all the way up on high, and I don't know if the cool light or the warm light would look better. I assumed the warm light because everything I'm surrounded by is by warm light, so I put on the warm light, and I'm going to experiment around and test things out and see how the thing goes, but this is the first video I've ever made with a ring light. In other news, y'all get to basically see all the fluffy stuff that I get to do on the internet. My daily posts on Instagram. My posts I basically do once a month or once every like three hours on YouTube. I know I'm in no way consistent with that. My basically eight trillion posts a day on Visco because I just got it and I have so many photos I want to turn black and white and put up on my aesthetic page. It's literally not even a social media to me. It's just me putting up black and white photography like, ooh, aesthetic. Oh dang, I'm out of root beer. How it just started Facebook and I'm still trying to figure it out. So I'm on all these social media platforms and you kind of get to see the fluff. Like I started a thing on Facebook where I'm starting to kind of sell my stuff and I only put up business related things on there. I don't do anything that's like personal. In other news. <laughs> Since you only get to see the fluff, I'm gonna tell you everything what's going on behind the scenes. So today is sept no, it's not September. <laughs> it is November 24th, 2018. And I officially have, let's call it five out of nine looks completely 100% filmed and completed for Saw Today's fashion film, which I wanted to be a little bit further ahead on at this point because I made the mission statement to all of my models that I wanted all the filming to be done before the snow fell, and guess what is outside? Just a, just a little, little bit of snow. Yeah, here's the thing. I have two people that I started filming, and I need to get more footage from, and then I have the two people who I don't have any footage from, and they're like right next to each other in the lineup, because I need both of them at the same time, which is the really hard thing. I wish I had a monitor. I can't see what I look like. I'm working with a Canon SL1 and I have no idea what this looks like, so I can't tell if I'm focusing in and out. I can't tell if I look overexposed or not. I can't tell anything. <laughs> if y'all saw my new trailer that went up on Instagram and YouTube for my new fashion film, You Don't Know Me, well, fashion film f f next collection, <laughs> which will be my 2020 collection. But the update on that is I already have two out of hopefully 12 looks done for that collection. And speaking of fashion films, I have a predicament. This kind of happened a few weeks ago, but I just watched a video over on Game Theory's channel. Um, so he just made a video over on his channel um, about Article 13. And basically, what Article 13 is about is about copyright claims and copyright issues with other smaller creators and how we probably won't be able to do crap, like dilly darn poop anymore, really, really soon. So. Let me, let me look it up. I want to be correct. I'm reading off of an article from one day ago. This is, this is happening, like, as we speak. Are you aware of the new copyright directive that the EU wants to take forward for next year? If you like to send gifts and memes to your friends, you upload and watch videos on YouTube, or you write and share articles on the web, you should definitely pay attention to the upcoming regulation. On September 12th, the European Parliament voted on the reform proposal of the EU copyright directive and approved the two controversial articles 11 and 13, which establish a charge to aggr uh, aggr aggregators? 
aggregators, and social networks for linking news on their pages and obliges platforms to filter the content that the users upload to detect if they commit copyright. The proposal must be discussed now between EO Council and the European Parliament, but the opponents to the directive have claimed that these two articles are a serious threat against freedom on the internet. The movement is Save Your Internet, which is composed of organizations such as the Electronic Frontier Foundation, European Digital Rights, and Spanish activist group Xnet, has launched a campaign across all EU countries to prevent the final approval of text. So basically what this is kind of dumbed down, and he really dumbs it down in his video way better than me, it basically states, if you're not big company, you no get right on anything. Did I say it clear enough? But basically threatens people like me who want to get a start on YouTube. I have a friend who just started college and she's getting her start on YouTube as well and I don't want anybody who's currently going even big creators and people as little as me to get these rules and regulations put upon us because this means if the copyright claims article 13 goes through this means that anything with a smidgen of anybody else's content or controversy or anything or remade music videos covers to songs like I said and they are even memes. Even memes. And this isn't just on YouTube, this is across all social platforms, even like Instagram and Tumblr, Reddit. All these different places are going to get this article enacted and, you know, it kind of threatens, you know, people like me who um, make music videos off of uh, other people's music and just want to make fashion films and show people things because I've wanted to do fashion films for a long time and I finally... I've been doing them for three years already. <laughs> I can't believe I'm already almost done with my fourth fashion film. That's insane. The amount of work that goes on the fashion films is absolutely crazy, and I can't express to you enough how much work I put into everything that I do. A lot of people just think like, oh wow, poof, it's there. Wow, that's amazing. You did a great job, or wow, I can't believe this thing exists. How long did it take you to do that? And I casually say, 300 hours, you know, just, At my burgundy prom dress took 300 hours. There, there's a reason why I'm talking about Article 13, and I know that's a really big reason. We should spread awareness to that. I'm going to link his original video down in the description because he explains it a lot better than I do. Another reason why it's kind of scary that this is happening is because I think it's already happening. And that's because, you know, you remember, um, you know, Into the Rose Garden, my biggest biggest project I've ever done in my entire life. 18 garments, 14 and a half minutes long. I did everyone's hair and makeup except for two people's makeup. I chose their shoes. I made all the outfits, just 44 separate garments. Within a year and a half, I filmed them from end of October through early January. I showed it to my school and it kind of failed, <laughs> but we did it. This was the biggest project in my life. And in like April, April-ish, it got taken down by YouTube for copyright claims. Now, I almost expected this to happen. None of my other fashion films have been taken down for copyright claims, but I have had other things say that they get like demonetized for copyright claims, but I am not monetized, so that doesn't really matter to me, and it just said it's not monetized. Mon Monetize monetizable. They're not monetizable, which is fine because I don't have enough viewership anyway to really get many views off of monetization, probably even not enough to like make a penny's worth of money, so it doesn't really matter to me. But the thing is, is that I had to re-upload the video and then I had to change the whole description. The first and second time I did this in the description, I did lay out all of the songs and all of the artists. I think I had about 11 to 14 songs in Into the Rose Garden. So there was bound to be a problem with that with YouTube's regulation. It was all mixed and intertwined together. Well, I never thought it would be fine. I I gave credit to all the artists in the description of my video. I said who it was by and what the song was from. And I had it under songs. I tried to put it in the description about what it was all about, and I ended up typing way too much, and it did not fit in the description. <laughs> but that's besides the point. I got it back up in like May-ish, and it was up, it was doing fine. And then 
just a few weeks ago, it got taken down again for copyright. It's still not back up, so if you don't see it, I'm sorry. I don't know if I want to try re-uploading it again. The first time when it first came out, it got a lot of views because people really wanted to see it since it was unable to play at my school when I first showed it. And then the second time, it just got like only like 87 views or something like it. And it sucks because it's such a big project that I worked on. And I want people to be able to view it if they want to view it. And I have those few people who like to go through everything I've made and see everything I've made again. I have those people for Instagram and YouTube and people who really actually like watching my videos. And it's kind of sad that the project I've been most proud of over all of these years has been taken down twice. So I don't know if I'm re-uploading it. I might try. But, what else can I do? So, I hope that cleared up some things for you guys, kind of letting you know what's going on in my life. Speech contest is coming up. I do not have the script completely written yet, but I do have a summary of what my short film this year is going to be. So that short film will probably be out around like end of January, February? I think around February it'll be out around then. I don't know the title of it yet, but I know exactly what it's all about. I just have to finish writing it. I have all my actors. They're people you've seen before. I'm tying this story with the last year's short film that I made, just continuing the story. I am also working on trying to tie every film, every school project, every fashion film, every video together into one universe so that everything works in one universe and that's such a project. <laughs> it's such a fun project but I'm really excited to do it. I am getting my own flag and silk soon which is super exciting. I really want to get into the YouTube thing a little bit more. I also want to get more into making music. One of the things on my bucket list is to make a 10 song album. I'll be seeing y'all later. 58 subscribers strong. Oh, she wants to leave. Bye my merch! It's not merch, but if you want to buy it when it's done, you certainly can. I gotta go now. Bye!